The best place to see the impacts of climate change on the oceans is in Australia at the Great Barrier Reef. It's the world's largest coral reef system. So big, you can see it from space. I'm headed to its southern reaches, to a place called Heron Island, where scientists from the University of Queensland are doing groundbreaking research on coral reefs. Ove Hogelberg is a marine biologist who has spent his life studying corals. More and more, his focus has been on climate change and the impact it will have on the world's reefs. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah, spectacular. It always pleases me when I look at a sea like this with a coral reef and fish and sharks. It's just and the reefs from above, it hides all that biodiversity and the only way to see it is to get in the water and, and have a look. Heron Island is surrounded by some of the most pristine coral reefs in the world. Before I see how climate change will affect them, Ove wants to show me what's at stake. I've been a diver since I was a teenager, but what greets me under the surface of the water blows my mind. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the seven natural wonders of the world, and I can see why. I have never seen this kind of diversity in life, or been this close to a majestic manta ray. Being eye to eye with these animals is humbling. I'm realizing how interconnected everything is. And when I look closer, I see that reefs are supporting all of this life. Providing food, shelter, and places to hide from predators. It turns out coral reefs punch way above their weight in productivity. Though they make up less than 1% of the ocean floor, reefs support a quarter of all marine species. If climate change will alter the reefs, is all this life under threat? The major problem is that we've assumed that the ocean is too big to fail. We've assumed we can fish the fish uh, and always have more fish. We've assumed that we can put pollution into the ocean and it'll just go away and not come back and won't build up. But what we've learned over the last uh, 50 years is that the ocean is finite, that there are limits to what it can absorb. At the moment it's showing all the signs that it's on wobbly legs. How is it trying to tell us? Like, what are the signs? It's an ocean which it hasn't been this warm or changing temperature for thousands of years. And we're seeing a change in the chemistry of the ocean that has no parallel in 65 million years, if not 300 million years. That's the last time it changed this quickly. They often refer to ocean acidification as the evil twin of global warming, right? Because it's, it's a separate but very potent effect. We only started to learn about it 15 years ago, so we really only know the tip of the iceberg. 